Hey guys, I just got finished making this uh, ball vise or engraver's vise, whatever you want to call it. I'm really happy with the way it turned out, so I thought I'd make a video in case anyone else wanted to follow my my tutorial or whatever. These things are really expensive. I've, I've needed one for a while, but I've been doing research and the really small ones are too small to work with. Because with, with these types of things, the bigger and heavier, the better they are. The more stable they are, and then you could do more things with them. So this, even the small ones are a few hundred dollars, and they're too small. And the big GRS model, that's about this size, is about 1500 bucks. So there was no way I was going to pay that. And the, there's, a few, there's a brand from China that some people use, but even the Chinese ones are, are a couple hundred bucks. They're not as big and heavy, and people have been complaining that they don't even work. They don't even hold your work. So I didn't want to get the Chinese one, so I thought I'd try to make my own. I did some research on YouTube to see if anyone else came up with a, a DIY version of these that was any good. And there's a few videos, a uh, few people tried it, and but I, I don't think any of the any of those are really practical. I mean, one guy cut a bowling ball in half, I saw. Another guy is like, oh, you go to a junkyard, you... Uh, use a drive shaft from like a 85 Buick and you cut it in half. I mean, they were just ridiculous. They required like a full machine shop. And um, I mean, even if I was willing to put in that type of labor and I had those tools, they looked hideous. I mean, I wanted something that would look nice on my bench. And I think this looks, this looks good. And best of all, it only cost me $25 to make it. So let me go over some of the functionality of it before I, I explain how I made it. So it has a, a vise on it here, so you could lock your work into the vise. It spins 360 degrees. It pivots, just like, so it, do, so it does everything that a typical ball vise does, but it has a few features that I think make this uh, maybe even better. So for one, it's the base is magnetic, so if you're working and you want your, and you know, you want somewhere to put your tools, your tools can just stick to it, right? Another thing that I noticed is what I've noticed a lot of um, engravers and stone setters do when they're using these is they'll use something like this, like thermal lock or some sort of heat material that instead of using the vise, they'll use the, whether it's pitch or thermal lock to, to heat it up and then put their, their piece on. That seems to be a very popular way of mounting, mounting your work, which is cool, but it really made me question like having this giant vise when only a small portion of the actual vise is usable because the even on the GRS model the the vise part is smaller than the entire unit so what I came up with is this and I think it's pretty great so I have the vise on here in case I wanna use it for a vise but if I wanna use it for uh, as as thermal lock or pitch, this this top plate pops off, and now under here, this is an entire bowl of pitch. So not only can you mount your work in the pitch to do engraving or embossing, but this pitch bowl is deep. So you can even do chasing and repose. For those who don't know, chasing and repose is an ancient metalworking technique where sheet metal is set in hot pitch and the metal is worked with a hammer and dies from both the front and the back to create complex relief patterns. So that is something that you definitely can't do with the GRS models. Aside from the 360 rotation and the pivoting, it also moves this way, this way, this way. That's really only useful. If you work with a microscope, you'd understand why that's, that's useful. But this top plate, this entire plate actually comes off, right? So you can swap it for another plate that I plan on filling with a material like this. This is, I made this material, I could put the recipe online if anyone's interested. It's a soldering clay. This is a heat, this is a fireproof clay that instead of the pitch bowl, I could fill it with this. And then when, then I can stick my work pieces in here and I have a pivotable and rotatable soldering station. So I think that's pretty cool and you can't really do that with the GRS models. So I think that's basically all the functionality. Oh yeah, so another thing is it rotates 
and this handle here the as you it rotates freely but if you tighten this handle it it becomes hard it it rotates with more friction i guess so with certain things like engraving or chasing or something you don't want it to move freely so the tighter you make this screw the less freely it moves to the point where it completely locks it it doesn't move at all so so yeah so let me uh explain how i made this thing and i'll link uh all the parts in the comment section so the first part that i ordered was this this is a steel hemisphere it's five inches this cost five dollars the second part that i had delivered today is this this is a um i forgot what it was called on amazon i think it's called a table bearing so this was also about five bucks and the third thing that i got today was this steel plate it's a five inch steel plate this was about four dollars and i drilled four holes in it so this is my this is my starting point and then everything else from here i'm hoping to get from the dollar store the steel bowl when i was when i was looking for these they're available in regular mild steel and there's also a stainless steel um available don't get the stainless steel get the mild steel and the reason why is the first thing i'm going to do is i have this neodymium magnet it's pretty powerful magnet i didn't buy this i had this already but if you had to buy these these are only like a couple bucks at home depot so anyway the first thing we're going to do is we're going to position this magnet in the bottom of the bowl just make sure when you center it you uh you get it as centered as possible on your first try because this is a really really powerful magnet and it's going to be difficult to move once you uh get it in there so anyway let's do that first we're going to position this all right so that magnet is in the bottom um you'll see why i added that magnet uh in a, in a later step so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to fill this with any junk metal that you have lying around I collected a bag of all the scrap steel that I could find. Oh, by the way, this top plate, it's also not stainless steel. Um, this is also mild steel. So, um, and that also needs to be mild steel. So, I, this is all just junk steel that, um, that I happened to have laying around. This stuff serves no purpose other than just wet, making it heavier. I want this to be as heavy as possible so it will stay stable so i'm just gonna put these old gears you can put nails you could put anything you might have around your house but the thing is is when you're putting the metal in here try to make sure that it's balanced so if you see i'm i'm trying to lay it in there even so that the bowl doesn't lean more to one side so it stays relatively balanced. I mean, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but we want to try to balance this as good as possible. All right. Yeah, that's really nice and heavy. All right, so now the next thing we're going to do, we are going to fill this the rest of the way with concrete. What I'm using here is rockite. I mean, honestly, it doesn't matter what you use. You could use um, regular concrete. You can use plaster of Paris. You can even use resin, really anything, just to uh, keep these things from moving around in there and also adding more weight. So let me mix up the rockite and I'll be back. Okay, I have the cement ready to go. I'm gonna pour it in here. But I'm not going to fill the container up. I'm going to just fill it about halfway. Because we have one step we need to do first before we um, can fill it completely. Alright, so let's move. Oh, before we uh, move on to the next step, let's make sure that this is level. So, sorry. Let's 
good. Or at least it's good enough. All right, so let's move on to the next step. All right, this is all cured. We're ready to move on to the next step. So now what we're going to do is we're going to attach this plate to the top of the ball. Like I said, my goal is not only to make this cheap and look professional, but also make it so that it's, um, so anyone could make it. I mean, all the other ball vices that I saw people make, they required expensive metal working tools. All this is gonna need is a drill. So I drilled these four holes, and if this works the way I think it will, you, that's all you'll need. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach this plate using these screws. I don't know if you can see that. They're 1024, three quarter inch screws. And we're gonna fill the rest of this up with concrete or cement. And, um, but we're gonna use these steel standoffs to go in the concrete to hold the plate on. That's gonna be the first step. I found these at my local hardware store for like a few cents. But if you don't, um, if you can't find these, there's no reason why you can't take the, the nut that comes with these screws and just stack three or four of them on top of each other. We're going to fill this the rest of the way with concrete and put these standoffs in there, but I took wax. I don't know if you can see that. I took wax and just stuffed it in the end to keep the concrete from flowing in there because we, um, I want to be able to take this apart to alter it if I want to in the future. So for the next step, we're going to take the screws, these four screws, put them through the holes, and then screw on these standoffs. You're going to take the nut that comes with the screw and screw it about halfway onto the bolt just to keep this um, standoff in place. So let me do all four of those. All right, I don't know where the fourth screw went. I'm gonna find it and then I'm gonna mix up the cement and we're gonna pour it in here. I'll be back. All right, I'm back. I found the missing screw. I put them in there. So I have all four in there. The nuts are about halfway. These nuts, they don't need to be super tight. You could even just tighten them with your hand, but the nuts are there to keep the screws straight. I put these standoffs in there, capped the end of the standoffs with some wax. That should keep the concrete from flowing in there so that I could take this on and off if I ever want to. But just in case a little bit of concrete does get in there, I sprayed some WD-40 on the screws. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I have the concrete mixed up. We're gonna mix this up and then we're gonna fill this up. Almost to the top. That looks pretty good. And now we're just gonna sit this in there and we are going to, uh, I'm sorry, this way. <laughs> we're gonna sit this in there. I put little marks on here to show exactly where I wanted it. Let me see if I can find the line. Yeah, it goes like this. So this is gonna sit on top of here like this. And now we're just gonna let it cure. If you want, you can put a level on there to check if it's level. Mine is almost level. We just need to uh, lift up this side a hair. That looks, that looks good. All right, so let me let this cure and I'll be back. All right, this has been sitting for like a half an hour. It should be cured now. At this point, Assuming this is cured, we're pretty much done with 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 assembling. Everything else should be screwed together, I believe. Or yeah, this is this is good. All right. So the next step is you buy this. This is just a five-inch steel ring. I got it for two dollars and fifty cents. You get one of these and another five inch steel plate. I think these are $3.50 each. Let me zoom out a little bit. All right, you're gonna take this plate and you are going to solder it to the five inch ring. 
let me solder this. Um, I'll do it off camera and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, here's the steel plate. I finished soldering it. I'm sure you notice it's black now. I used a blackening solution. I'm gonna, it's called Jax. It's just for aesthetics. You don't have to use it. I just like the way it looks. All the steel parts on this, I'm gonna blacken. Now we're just gonna go to the dollar store and see if they have what we need to finish this up. I think right now we're around $20. I'll total it up at the end, but I think we're around close to $20. And if they have what we need at the dollar store and this thing works, then I think we'll meet my target of between $25 and $35. Okay, here we are at Cost Mart, the world's best dollar store. Okay, didn't come here for this, but this would be perfect for the hemisphere. So if your local store has this, you could get this and actually save some money because instead of five bucks, it is a dollar fifty-nine. And these little dimples here, I bet you they would hold grease really well, so it would slide really well. All right, let's let's um, this we didn't come here for this. Let's find what we came here for. This is what we came here for. This wooden mortar and pestle. This is perfect. As a matter of fact, we're gonna be able to use both of these. So let's take this home and I will uh, show you how to finish this. And the price is $4.99. Perfect. All right, so at this point, we're pretty much done. The mortar, we're just gonna do the same thing as we did with the hemisphere. We are gonna fill it with as much scrap metal as we can find and then top it off with cement. And then the rest is pretty self-explanatory. The hemisphere goes in here. The bearing gets screwed to the hemisphere. Four uh, magnets get screwed to the bearing. And the plate that we soldered gets attached to the magnets. The pestle that came with the mortar, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a chunk off of it and we're gonna drill a hole halfway through it. Then we're gonna find a, a screw that matches the threads. Oh, this bearing, when you get it, it comes with a screw, a set screw here for adjusting the backlash in the bearing. So you're gonna take that set screw out and you're gonna replace it with just a random screw that you can find. These are metric threads. I don't remember the, the exact size, but they're metric. And you're gonna take, you're gonna cut a chunk off the pestle. You're gonna drill a hole halfway through it. And then you're gonna stick the screw halfway into the hole of the chunk of wood and glue it in there. Then you take the screw, stick it in a drill, and just while the drill is running, just run some sandpaper on it until it's round. 25 bucks finished. If you want to add, 25 bucks is for everything except the vise. If you want to add the vise on top, that's going to be like another $7. If you were interested in this, you might be interested in my next project. Actually, I actually have two projects I'm working on right now. One is a mini desktop jeweler's lathe that's also made with uh, off-the-shelf parts and some dollar store stuff. And another project I'm actually really excited about, it's a mini jeweler's diamond saw. That's gonna, it's sort of hard to explain, but it's gonna run on linear rails and it's gonna be used for cutting lapidary stone and metal for jewelry work. It's gonna, because the saw runs on linear rails, I'm hoping that it's gonna be like a very highly precision saw for cutting very thin lapidary material for like inlays or also for metal. I already have most of the parts for both of these projects, so they're also gonna be very budgety and cheap and hopefully really good so as usual if you got anything from this video please consider subscribing and i'll see you in the next video